Hello my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So guys, we are going to talk about the mysteries of the universe. And perhaps they're not really so mysterious after all. Perhaps all the answers, or many of the answers, have been right out in front of us the whole time. You know, there's so many different traditions around the world that all talk about the same things and perhaps a little bit different terminology, but are really giving us the same explanations for what we see all around us. Now, there has been a split between the East and the West as far as, you know, philosophy and history. And now we're in a time period where everything is coming together. And that is a beautiful thing. So this is a picture of a very important person. And how many of you recognize this gentleman? Well, that is Nikola Tesla. And so he had said, he is one of the most brilliant minds that we've ever been graced with. If you want to find out and know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Energy, frequency, and vibration. And so one of the things that's emerging now is something called electric universe theory. And Electric Universe Theory maintains modern astrophysics and cosmology leaves out the electric aspect of plasma. For example, NASA refers to plasma as hot gas in press releases and public offerings. It says electricity, not gravity, is the defining force of the universe. Electric Universe has no need for black holes, the Big Bang, dark matter, or dark energy to ex explain the behavior of galaxies. And, you know, many of those things really have not been proven. And that's part of this whole thing where we're giving a philosophy by the mainstream as if it's completely proven, but in reality, it's just theory and it's not. Much of it is not. Electric Universe is creating a grassroots revolution in modern cosmology still academically rejected. And again, obviously, why reject something? Well, a lot of times there's profits to be had. And that is one of the big things. And by controlling people and controlling the flow of information, more people could be basically kept in the dark and manipulated easier. And there's always profits uh, to be made as well. Because one of the things... Um, about Tesla uh, were his discoveries and his inventions. So Nikola Tesla's greatest discovery was an entirely new kind of electricity. He called it radiant matter, aka dielectricity, radiant energy, impulse electricity, long tr longitudinal waves. Why was it so amazing? Because his experiments revealed the existence of the ether the ever-present field that connects all things, the non-physical force behind all physical phenomena. And does that sound familiar? Does it not sound like the forces Star Wars, which if you guys have watched many of my videos, you know that it's the same thing we've talked about in the East under different names forever, for thousands of years. And, and all this really, the knowledge of this probably goes back to advanced civilizations as well. So infinite energy lay within every inch of the ether. The ancient technologies were all based upon the ether. The future revolves around our study of the ether. So it's all about that. And it's it's limitless energy. So if there's limitless energy, hmm, you know, there goes a lot of big businesses down the tubes, right? Because it can be free for all, and you take that out of the equation. If you only knew the magnificence of 3, 6, and 9, then you would have a key to the universe. And that's a quote from Tesla. And uh, there's a lot to that. There's a lot to the numerology. There's a lot to the fractal nature of the universe, which we will get into much more in-depth discussions on some future videos and there are some in-depth discussions on some of my oldest uh, videos on the fractal nature of the universe the tree of life and all it, it's all part of that as above so below 
which is nothing more than science. It's just science. It's the laws of the universe that have been hidden from the masses. The ether is the cause of every magnetic field. Electricity could not exist without the ether. The ether is the medium for all EM waves from radio to gamma. Every particle in the universe is bathed in the sea of ether, including the so-called electrons of atoms and plasma. Either is how particles know they are moving near the speed of light in a vacuum, even if they are accelerated very slowly. And then we get into, this is off the Thunderbolts project, and the Thunderbolts project is something that many of you are, are very keen on and have read up on. If you haven't, then we have some links here for you as well. And so, you know, Tesla, he was born in 1856, died in 1943. And, um, you know, this is entitled Tesla and the Electric Universe. And it, as it says here, it's surprising how few people have heard of him, considering his many fundamental achievements. He was an inventor, physicist, and electrical engineer of unusual intellectual brilliance. Of Serbian descent, he worked mostly in the U.S., but all too often others have taken credit for his work. He was more philanthropic than business savvy. Yes, I think he was completely taken advantage of for sure. And as is often the case, the more commercially astute ran with his ideas and stole his glory. For example, Marconi was originally granted the patent for radio technology, although this was repealed in 1949. And Thomas Edison even resorted to electrocuting live animals in an attempt to discredit Tesla's superior AC alternating current used globally today. Uh, Tesla won the day on this occasion and his ideas now form the basis of modern power generation and distribution. Edison had favored far less efficient DC direct current. Names like Edison and Marconi still tend to feature more prominently in most electrical textbooks, however. For this reason, Tesla is often described as an underground hero, and some even laud him as the man who invented the 20th century. Such a tribute does not seem unreasonable when you consider that Tesla also invented the spark plug, x-rays, neon, lasers, and the basic technology behind radar and robotics. There are many more, although he was often labeled a nut in his own day for proposing technology which we now take for granted. The term crackpot overused by many of today's pseudo-skeptics, springs to mind. Unfortunately, because of the military and economic implications of many of his ideas, much of his work has been clouded by conspiracy theories. For example, it's often claimed that J.P. Morgan put an end to the Wardenclyffe uh, Tower project when he discovered that it could also be used for wireless energy distribution, fearing that he wouldn't be able to put a meter on it. And it's certainly true that J. Edgar Hoover seized Tesla's work immediately after his death in 1943 and declared it most secret. And it's interesting to know that one of President Trump's own relatives took up the work on that actual work. So conspiracy theories aside, however, there was much more to Tesla than a brilliant inventor. He also recognized the broader implications of electromagnetism and electrodynamics, and he wasn't afraid to speak his mind on some of the big issues of the day. The theory, relativity, is like a beggar clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. Its exponents are brilliant men, but they are metaphysicists and not scientists, said Tesla back in July 11, 1935. He recognized the roots of an affliction which now poisons mainstream cosmology, the rise of mathematics over experiment. Cosmology today, of course, is a field dominated by mathematicians and not scientists, and few dare to question the situation. The father of plasma physics and plasma cosmology, Hans Alfven, echoed a similar statement. He was also a critic of the mathematical approach to science. We have learned again that science without contact with experiments is an enterprise which is likely to go completely astray into imaginary conjecture. Tesla would have concurred. Today, scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments, and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Despite his obvious genius, however, Tesla didn't always help himself and failed to document many of his ideas. 
Unfortunately, his assistants filed many patents on his behalf without his knowledge, although it is alleged that many of these remain secret. So, followers of the emergency electrodynamic paradigm will nonetheless recognize many striking parallels between Tesla's ideas and today's electric universe. This planet, with all its appalling immensity, is to electric currents virtually no more than a small metal ball. So said Tesla. He went further. Throughout space, there is energy. Is this energy static or kinetic? If static, our hopes are in vain. If kinetic, and this is, we know it is for certain, then it is a mere question of time when men will succeed in attaching their machinery to the very wheelwork of nature. And it seems to have been around Tesla's time that electricity in space suddenly became taboo. And even to this day, obfuscations are employed to describe electric currents in space. How often do we hear terms more appropriate for fluid dynamics? Electron rain, solar wind, shock front, ion storm are, are common examples. Why not call them what they are? The trouble is electromagnetism is notoriously difficult to model mathematically. And current models are based on gravity alone. So, you know, there are some other links there as well. And so, you know, the electric universe theory is a, is a theory that is becoming increasingly popular. And it highlights the importance of electricity throughout the universe. It's based on the recognition of existing natural electrical phenomena, such as lightning and St. Elmo's fire, and the known properties of plasmas, which are ionized gases which make up 99.999% of the visible universe and react strongly to electromagnetic fields. Much of the material considered by the electric universe is peer-reviewed, but not all. And so it, it gets into uh, quite a few different things here. But this is definitely a new way of seeing the universe um, and actually a new way really only on the Western uh, front in many ways because in the East they understood it in depth and it does feel like things have been covered up and obf obfuscated uh, here in the West and really only truly known in the circles of the mystery traditions and you know that's one of the things you know things had to be hidden in the West and you have to wonder why why hide it in the West you know, and again, it's it's all basically been part of controlling information, and there's power when you control information. So, you know, today magnetic fields are detected everywhere, even in the quote-unquote empty depths of intergalactic space. Magnetic fields cannot exist without the causative electric currents. It's the electric currents that generate the magnetic fields. The naked electric force is 39 orders of magnitude stronger than gravity. The visible universe is constituted almost entirely of electrically active plasma. In the 20th century, the pioneers of plasma science inspired a new school of investigation called plasma cosmology. Plasma cosmologists suggest that electricity is the primary force organizing spiral galaxies and the astonishing galactic clusters we now see in deep space. Plasma cosmology has achieved surprising success in predicting major discoveries of the space age. This new perspective does not require purely theoretical inventions based on mathematical assumptions like the Big Bang, dark matter, dark energy, neuron stars, or black holes. An electric universe extends the findings of plasma cosmology to the formation and evolution of stars and their planetary satellites. Stars are formed at the intersections of galactic currents, current filaments, in dusty space plasma. The size of a star and its color are determined electrically and may change suddenly. That's interesting. Novae and supernovae are the explosive response of the stars to a power surge in their galactic circuit. So thinking about what's going on now in our world, we're seeing a change in the sun, for sure. Now, according to the old science, you know, it's going to take billions of years for the sun to just basically die out. And really, you know, it takes long periods to change virtually at all. It's like a long, slow process. That at least that's what we've been taught. But in the electric universe, no, because everything is completely tied together. 
So if there's something that happens somewhere else, it can aff affect our star or any star in a more rapid fashion than what we are currently taught. And perhaps that is what we have going on around us right now. The standard model of the sun proposes that the pressure at the core of the sun provokes a thermonuclear reaction. Proponents of this model say this thermonuclear furnace causes the sun to shine. The electric sun model, on the other hand, envisions thermonuclear reactions and neutrino, neutrino production at or close to the surface of the sun, where the maximum exchange between the sun and its external environment occurs. It's electricity that energizes the stars, including the sun, in the form of a glow discharge. This external power source explains why the temperature of the sun increases above the photosphere to the coronal temperature of 2 million degrees. Powerful plasma feedback affects, maintains a steady output of visible solar radiation while variations in power input show up in the familiar sunspot cycle. It is in the nature of a glow discharge that all stars possess a weak electric field beyond the corona. As charged particles of the solar wind move away from the sun, they continue to be accelerated due to the sun's electric field, which extends to the heliopause. So, and comets are another fascinating issue, because comets are electrically charged bodies moving on elliptical orbits through the sun's interplanetary electric field. As it approaches the sun, the comet's swift radical movement develops arcing on the nucleus. The arcs produce jets of dust and ions that form the coma and visible tails. Many comets are solid rocks with dry surfaces. This, this flies in the face of the dirty snowball theory. And so the sharply defined features of a comet nuclei make it clear that they're not dirty snowballs in effect sublimating in the sun. Due to the electric force, a comet can entrain a mass of hydrogen from the sun greater than that of the mass of the comet's nucleus. The unexpected x-rays of a cometary discharge can reach 2 million degrees. Cometary nuclei reveal deeply cratered and blackened surfaces due to electric arcing. Since comet nuclei are eroded electrically, they could not survive across eons of the solar system history and may have been produced much more recently than proposed in the standard model. And as far as planetary science in the recent history of the solar system, an elect its electric, electrical environment changed. Under changing electrical conditions, planetary orbits changed as well. Close approaches of planets lead to powerful electric arcing between the planets and the moons. All rocky bodies in the solar system show the massive scars of these kinds of electrical events. Electrical discharge scarring is occurring even now on Jupiter's closest moon, Io, and on Saturn's moon, en Enceladus. And electrical activity continues on Mars, driving dust devils the size of Mount Everest, created by the electrical differential between the surface of Mars and surrounding space. All the dominant surface features of Mars show the patterns of electric discharge, suggesting that in the past a vast quantity of material was excavated electrically from Mars. Electric Universe proponents suggest that it was a vast, it was an interplanetary arc that created the Martian Valleys Marinaris. And the largest known scar on a solid planet, much of the rocky material exploding from Mars became comets, asteroids, and meteorites. And so, I mean, this changes everything, and this kind of explains what we might have going on right now with these other bodies that are actually close to us and coming close to us. They could actually affect, you know, our, our place in this solar system and also affect us electromagnetically, affect the sun electromagnetically. Everything is tied together electromagnetically, and... This, you know, really gives us a clearer view of, of how things perhaps are. And so this is the Thunderbolt project, so you guys could go ahead and read through it. Lots of great stuff in there. And this is a beginner's guide to the Electric Universe. And 
you know, there, there's many other people that have talked about these things. And staying on the Western side of things, we have um, Dr. Reich here. And so Dr. Wilhelm Reich is, is very well known for his experiments with orgone energy or what he called orgone energy. And again, it's the same thing that we're talking about. It's the same either. It's, it's, it's been basically talked about in every tradition when we start looking deep and so he thought that this was um, perhaps a cure for almost everything and certainly health wise when we think of everything being electric in nature and um, you know it becomes apparent that conductivity is very very important to health you know as well as other things as well and um, you know that is the basis of so many things so what is energy really and what is this energy obviously in in china it's it's chi you know in japan it's ki and in india it's prana and so they've understood this energy forever you know it goes it goes back thousands of years and it is the basis from which everything else springs everything else and so when we have imbalances, you know, it, it's usually an imbalance in the different types of, of chi, ki, prana, life force. And now this is Franz Barden. And so jumping into the hermetic side of things. And what is hermeticism? Hermeticism uh, is basically it comes out of the teachings of Hermes, Trismegistus. And so Hermes is uh, a Greek god, quote unquote, perhaps you know, Hermes was an actual person, you know, as perhaps, you know, many of the gods were actual people and, uh, you know, not quote unquote gods at all, but gods in the sense of beings that had higher knowledge and share them with humans and share them with uh, others. And so Hermeticism has been something that has been under you know, tried to go under the radar, as, as so to speak, uh, to avoid persecution throughout many ages. And, uh, you know, in our time, it's come out into the open and to the forefront because um, it basically, again, talks about the either. And, uh, you know, it, of course, in the East, these things were always just a part of yoga and a part of Qigong. And uh, I've shared with this PDF with you guys before a long time ago, maybe three, four hundred videos ago. Uh, and this is Initiation into Hermetics, and this is by Franz Barden. And he, he words it as a course of instruction, magic, theory, and practice. But in reality, it's nothing but science. It's just stuff that's been hidden and hidden, as we said, in many cases on purpose. And so everything is energy everything is energy in this in this world in this universe that we see it's all energy it's all consciousness ultimately and so in this um it has a table of con contents and you know one of the first things that you get into is it's all about the elements and you know fire water air and earth we're all you know very very familiar with in this he calls it akasa or akasha and many have probably heard of Akashic records. And so again, this is the either. This is chi, this is prana, this is ki, this is the life force, this is everything. And so it gets into this as well. And this is a good book. And this is interesting because when I was seven years old, we moved into a house and it was the house of a doctor who, um, who had died. And there was nothing into this house at all. There was nothing in this house when we moved in except for down in the basement, tucked away in a small corner, this one book. And uh, I found it just being a curious seven-year-old, you know, poking around where he shouldn't. And uh, I felt like it was left for me. So this began my course and uh, my learning at, at seven years of age. And I was reading this and, and I was not under understanding it at all. But I didn't um, give the book up. I held on to it and kept attempting to learn and t to read from it. And, uh, you know, eventually it, it did settle in. And this also pulled me down my pathway. And so it gets into many, many things. And some things will scare uh, fundamentalist um, thinkers because, you know, it, it basically is something that they've wanted to keep 
quiet. And of course, you know, as we've looked at the history of the Catholic Church and Constantine, it's been all about control. So anything that gives the individual power will be something that, you know, they will try to put fear into it. But it's no different, really, than uh, Qigong. And so this over here, this is a awesome PDF. It's 601 pages long, and it's on medical Qigong. So anybody that really wants to learn some about medical Qigong, this is uh, a, an amazing work. And this is only one of at least five of these books in this series. So you're talking well over 3,000 pages of medical Qigong. And many people probably didn't have a clue that it was so in-depth. Um, but yeah, there are doctors in medical Qigong. And here are some medical Qigong examination and clinical qualifications in China. And so these five medical Qigong proficiency examinations were used to determine the student's energetic potential. And they were included in the final exams at Haidian University in Beijing, China. And they were also used throughout China by various traditional Chinese medical universities. The five proficiency examinations used to test graduates' energetic and alchemical skills before allowing them to complete their internship at a resident hospital included decreasing the alcohol content in a cup of wine, neutralizing the acid in a glass of water to which a capsule of azorbic acid had been added, imprinting an image of the palm on an x-ray film, changing the alkaline component of red litmus paper, and changing the acidic components of blue litmus paper described as follows. Wine is poured into two cups on the table in front of the student. The student must then purge and reduce the alcohol content in one cup. The student may also be asked to increase the alcohol content in the second cup. This is achieved through transferring the alcohol from the first cup into the second cup via the use of energy only only energy, intent, neutralizing the acid in a glass of water to which a capsule of absorbic acid had been added. A glass of water containing a dissolved vitamin C tablet is placed on the table in front of the student. The student must purge the vitamin C water, neutralizing its acidic content. Again, just through energy. Imprinting, an image of a palm on an x-ray film. A piece of x-ray film is wrapped with the towel and placed on a table in front of the student. A student must place his or her hand over the towel and emit chi into the x-ray film. Once the x-ray film has been developed, an image of the student's palm must be visible on the film. Just an energy transfer. Changing the acidic component of red litmus paper, a strip of red litmus paper is placed inside a glass flask and floats in acidic solution. The student must place his or her hand over the strip of red litmus paper and emit chi into the acidic solution, increasing or decreasing its acidic nature depending on the examining doctor's request. And changing the alkaline component of a blue litmus paper, a strip of blue litmus paper is placed inside a glass flask and floats in the alkaline solution. The student must place his or her hand over the strip of blue litmus paper and emit chi into the alkaline solution, increasing or decreasing its alkaline nature depending on the examining doctor's request. And so being able to change water into wine basically is one of the things that you are expected to be able to do as a doctor of medical qigong. This is the potential that lies within all humans. This is the potential that we all have and we can do it if we are just simply trained. And we could do even greater things. As is said in the Bible, you know, ye shall do even greater things than these if you only believe and if you only learn. So, you know, part of it is the fact that there is this electromagnetic, bioelectromagnetic force that runs through everything and connects everything. So, we, through our consciousness, can draw it, we can build it, we can store it, we could direct it, and we could actually heal others with it. And it it's, appears to be an amazing thing, but in reality, it's nothing but just science. It is a law of the natural universe. As we see on the left, neurons in the brain, as we see on the right, galaxies in the universe, you are there. And so, as above, so below, the universe itself is perhaps just a giant mind. Are you living in the mind of God right now? 
Perhaps, perhaps, as above, so below. So my friends, I hope this gets you guys thinking and wanting to go further. I so encourage you to read these two PDFs and uh, especially this one. And there are more than this where this came from. Um, uh, there's five other ones, over 3,000 pages of medical Qigong uh, for you guys to get totally absorbed in. It is a huge field. It is uh, mind-blowing. And there is so much information in there um, to learn. And, you know, this is just science. And this is science that has been taught for thousands and thousands of years. And we are all finally catching up to it. And those of us that want to learn and want to go to that next level and manifest, you know, that kingdom of heaven here on earth that is spoken of. And this is a part of it. Understanding our own inherent potential and power and what we really can achieve. And it is something that is amazing. If you would only open up your minds and believe, that's it. That ant can move the mountain if it only believed. So my friends, as always, please thumbs up to support the channel, subscribe, click the bell, and join our growing family. Get all the notifications, share with as many people as possible so we can wake them up to the potential that we all have and we can manifest a positive outcome here on the planet and we can have true freedom and change it because the kingdom of heaven lies within you at this very moment. May you guys be blessed with abundant peace, love, health, and well-being. My friends, God bless and namaste.